Today's video is a guide on how to get the most out of your DBX286S microphone preamp and processor. Let's get into it. Welcome back guys, this is Shane. So today's video will be a no-nonsense guide on how to get the most out of your DBX286S and how to run it for the best results. Now, I've actually got two of these units. I picked up another one maybe three or four weeks ago. The one I've had before this one though, I've had for a few months and I use it on my podcast and I love it. The results speak for themselves. But in this video, I'm gonna show you a little bit more in depth about what each of the controls can do on the front and how to sort of tailor the sound to suit your particular voice. So let's do it. So the first thing I wanna show you on this unit is the gain control. And unlike a lot of other solutions for doing podcasting or voiceover work, you don't need a cloud lifter. This particular unit, the 286S, is more than capable of pushing any microphone. Whether it's the Rode Procaster that I'm using, a pod mic or a Shure SM7B, it doesn't matter. This will do the job, no problems there at all. So as you can see, I've got the game most of the way up and it's still nice and quiet. There's no noise or hiss or anything like that, which is another great reason to get one of these units. Now, if I turn this down, you're going to hear that my vo input volume actually drops. If I turn it back up, it's going to get nice and clean and full sounding. And notice I'm only using two of the green lights at the maximum. You can, of course, get this up into the yellow zone, but I always like to play things safe. I think that sounds a little bit too hot and yeah, a little bit sort of, I don't know, I don't really like it. I kind of like it on the green lights. I think that's the safe zone in my opinion on this. You can, the yellow light is the safe zone as well, but for what I like, I really like it sitting in the green zone. I think that kind of sounds the best to my ear. There's two buttons after the gain control. The first one is phantom power. Now, if you're using a condenser microphone, like a Rode NT1 or an NT2A or something like that that requires phantom power, you can simply push this on. Now, this particular microphone doesn't require that, so I don't need it. And if it was in, it wouldn't damage the microphone or anything like that either. But if you do use a studio condenser microphone, then have that button in, otherwise you won't get any signal at all. By this stage of the video, you're probably used to how all this is sounding right now, but I'm gonna hit the process bypass button. And what this is doing right now, as it's now enabled, you're not getting any processing on the audio. All you're getting is the mic line going out into my recorder, thanks to the lovely preamp that's actually built into this unit as well. So this sounds vastly different to what you just heard. There's no uh, expander or gate on or anything like that either. Two band EQ is also bypassed. Uh, and as is the compressor. So it does sound quite a lot different. If I was to move further back from the microphone, you're gonna lose my voice. Whereas if I, I've got the compression on with this enabled, if I was to sit back, it's gonna be way louder as you can probably now hear. So the compressor is great and we'll get over to that right now. There's a lot of misconceptions about what compression does and how it works. I'm gonna break it down to you like this if you're new to this whole terminology. Compression brings up the quiet parts and it also brings down the loudest part. So what this means is if you're sort of sitting back from the microphone, it should boost up the volume and make it almost not a lot different to if I was close to the microphone, you're gonna notice the proximity effect, but I could turn my head and odds are it's still gonna sound nice and full and clear sounding, which is something that it wouldn't do without it on. And I'll show you that right now. So if I was to bypass everything and then I turn my head, I'm gonna drop the signal altogether as opposed to talking straight into the front. And now with the compressor back on, as you can see, it's uh, it's working really, really well. To put it into simple terms with this two control compressor, the drive is how much compression you wanna add. You can add a whole lot more and it will even out the dynamics even more. If, even if I was to talk softly, it's still gonna bring it up and it's gonna sound just as loud as if I was to talk really, really loudly, which I am right now. So that kind of evens it out. If we take a look at the other control on the compressor, this is the density control. So if I was to turn this up, it's gonna be a much faster release. And as you can probably tell, it sounds a little bit louder. Watch these red lights as I stop talking. They instantly drop down. Now, if I was to turn it the other way, watch the red lights as I stop talking. It takes much, much longer. So this is a basically like a time control on how long it takes for the compressor to release. Now, there's no right or wrong for setting this. Set it however you like. I kind of like it at about here. I think this sort of works the best to maintain a pretty nice sound for voice application. Let's check out the de that's built into this unit as well. It's a really powerful de -esso. I've had it set the same way the entire time. The frequency control basically fine tunes where that S frequency is or that sibilance frequency that you want to remove. Now, if I'm to leave the frequency where it is and I turn up the threshold, 
It's basically going to sound like I have a speech impediment. I'll show you that now. As I turn it up, I've lost all of the S words or the top end out of my voice. So you don't want to overdo this and you just want to find a frequency that works for you. You can find it by simply making a S noise like that. And as you can see, both of the lights came on and then you can fine tune the frequency actually with it up as well. So I, I, after playing with this, this sort of suits my voice somewhere around like this. And it's not overly prominent. It still sounds very natural, but just takes a little bit of that sizzle off. Definitely don't overdo the Diesa. It will ruin your audio. One of my personal favorite things about the 286S is the two-band EQ, which is built in. We have an LF and HF control. So this is high frequency and low frequency. What this will do as you add bass, it's going to add an 80 hertz boost, but also cut somewhere around 250. So it's going to sound fuller and warmer and rounder sounding, but it's not ever going to get muddy. This two band EQ is really something special. If you want to add more top end, you can simply bring this one up as well, and it's going to get pretty sharp and bright. I much prefer this down. You won't need a whole lot of this what I'm going to do now is show you how this sounds with the EQ currently off. Let's take a listen. And that sounds completely different. This two band EQ is really something magical. Yeah, just turn it up to about there, depending on your voice and microphone. You should get some pretty great results. One of the other fantastic features on this unit is the expander and gate. Now, I did a full explanation of the difference between an expander and a gate. And if you missed that video, I'll leave it up in the cards as well. And you can check that out for sort of more of a deep dive video. I'm going to show you the difference now. And I've currently got this set to expander mode, which means it's not hard muting the signal. A gate completely shuts the door, basically, when the audio stops whereas the expander doesn't. Now, if you're in a two-person podcast, I think the expander sounds best, even on its own, actually, if you're in a one-person podcast. But if you've got loud neighbors or a dog barking outside, you definitely want to use the gate. So I'm going to switch it up and turn up the gate control a little more now. And as I stop talking, you're basically hearing nothing. Now, that can be okay, right? But I find like if, you, if you've got someone else in the room there on, say, the opposite side of the desk talking into another microphone, it sounds way too processed and not very natural and not very nice to listen to over the course of say a 30 minute podcast so what i like to do is just run the expander mode i'm going to show you now how well this works i'm going to turn this microphone around on the other side of the desk and talk like a, to simulate that of someone else being in the room and we'll see how much audio comes into the microphone you'll hear a little bit but it it's nowhere near as loud so here we go All right, so you're over to my shirt microphone right now, and this is basically the setup that I have in this room. Give or take, there's usually a couple of us in here in different chairs, but this is to simulate how much or how little audio you'll still hear with the expander. So here we go. Right now we're checking out expander mode. I've got the microphone facing the other side of the table, and odds are it's dropped the volume in quite a lot. And back to the same position with the microphone. So I love the expander. Depending on how you're running the compression and all that kind of stuff, you'll get some different results, but the expander mode is great. It just brings everything under that threshold down and really it doesn't mute it completely, but it mutes it enough that it's you're never going to have spill in the other person's microphone. Now, depending on your room and all and the microphones that you're using, you're going to have to play around with that a little bit, but I really like that. This last dial on the 286S is the output gain control. I've seen other videos where they say, oh, just leave it at zero and, and adjust everything for that. I don't think so. I really prefer having it lower than zero. And it also depends on your sound card and what audio interface you're using, all that kind of thing. For my Zoom R16, I've got the gain controls on that all the way down. If I was to turn this up, I would actually clip the signal going into that, which is what I don't want. So I always like to have the output gain slightly lower than zero because that means you've got no chance of clipping your desk. So that's just a little bit of a heads up with my experience with this unit. I think it sounds best when I don't have the gain control all the way set to zero. For my particular situation, if you've got a different sound card, odds are it's gonna, you're going to have to set that however works for you. But don't ever send this out to whatever you're recording to and have it in the danger zone. Always keep everything safe and you should be fine. I really love the fact that the compressor and the output control really keeps a very safe signal going out. And I, I love this thing. I think it's a really great unit. Thanks for watching, folks. This is Shane. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. So what do I think of the 286S overall? I love this unit. I couldn't be happier and I liked it so much. I now have two of these things as well. So these are going to be my main sort of podcasting 
audio process, preamps, all that kind of stuff. It just saves the hassle of having to do any of that in post. I set them up for this particular room and I never have to worry about them again. I send the audio out to my Zoom R16 recorder, get it on an SD card, drop it into the computer, sync it up with the video, which is what I'll be doing on this video, and that is it. So overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Let me know your thoughts of the sound quality. And if you already own one of these and you were a little bit unsure about it, please let me know if this video has also been really helpful. I appreciate that. Thanks again for watching. I'll leave some links through to B&H and also Sweetwater in links below if you want to find out more about this if you don't already have one. Thanks again. Catch you soon. See ya.